Good evening. Thank you very much. I'm Simon Owen Johnston. I'm a shoulder surgeon at TLOC, colleague of all the rest of these colleagues here. And I'm going to tell you a half-finished story of a chap called Ben, who is a patient of mine. It's a patient of someone else here as well. But if it's not you, you've probably all got a Ben. So Ben is 24, otherwise healthy. He wants to be a primary school teacher. And he came to see me, telling me the story that about two years ago, he jumped into a swimming pool and he felt his shoulder slide out of joint, very painful, slid back in again, didn't go to hospital, didn't have any imaging, didn't have any physio, didn't have any anything. And over the subsequent two years, he's been unable to trust that shoulder. It then transpires that the other shoulder is a little bit wobbly too. <coughs> so I have a look at this chap. And I'm mindful of this, which is our original classification system. So you remember that we have to thank the people at Stanmore for muscle patterning disorder. So this is Andrew Jaggy, Simon Lambert, Lippy Castle and others. But prior to this, which is a rag bag, we had Tubbs and Ambry. So Tubbs, traumatic, unilateral with a Bankart lesion. Classical, classical classification. And Ambry, atraumatic, multi-directional, bilateral instability. So already I kind of have a feeling that Ben is down here somewhere and the R in this is for rehab. And Codman, who wrote this in 1950-odd, said, never operate on these patients, it's a disaster. And that's still in all the orthopaedic textbooks. It may well be in the physio textbooks as well. And the I is for a thing called an inferior capsular shift that we never really do anymore. But I thought, well, Rather than write this 24-year-old off, maybe I can do a little better. Maybe it's worth just having a look at him with a bit more seriousness. So I find also that when he elevates in forward flexion, he's pec dominant. So as well as being down here as an ambry, he's partly over towards a muscle patterning disorder. So he's in double trouble. Then I find also he's got bilateral sulcus signs, which pushes me back over here. But I'm wondering, because I'm a surgeon, can I do something for him? Is there any way I can poke him back up towards something I could do something to? <coughs> so obviously, MRI scan. What else? So on his scan, and this is an axial sequence, a horizontal cut of a left shoulder looking upwards. You can see by the arrow there, the anterior labrum, that little black thing has been detached. So as well as his hypermobile syndrome and his muscle patterning disorder, he's also torn something. So poor old Ben is bang in the middle there. He's a complete <laughs> catastrophe. So I know that he needs a whole bunch of rehab. And his cuff's weak as well, so we need to get his cuff working. So I send him off to somebody here. You're here somewhere. You know who you are. <laughs> but I'm also thinking that because he oops, has got this little thing, that's his proprioceptive microphone. That's the bit that Dave's talking about. In the shoulder, that anterior labrum is the thing that tells his cerebellum that the head is coming out forward. And without that switched on, all the rehab in the world is going to be limited. It's going to be capped. So I have a vision for Ben that we have a position here. We know the enemies. We know he has a Bankart lesion. We know if he <coughs> spotted it, he's got a hill sax at the back as well. We know that he's got a muscle patterning disorder that needs to be trained out. We know that he has hypermobility, and I know that nobody can really change that collagen. But there are things I can do. So we've hatched a plan that he's going to have a load of rehab, and that somewhere along the journey between where he is currently and where we want him to be, which is with a shoulder that he can forget about and use like I use my shoulders, he's going to have a lot of rehab, but he may have an operation. And so what we plan for him is a little minimally invasive thing, just to simply put that labrum back on. So it's a keyhole operation, very straightforward. It's not going to turn him around, but it's going to push him in the direction of a stable shoulder. The question about that is the timing. And I know for my patients, and you know for our patients, that between where they are and where they want to be, they have all that rehab, and they may have an operation somewhere along that journey. And the timing in Ben's case is me waiting for his physio to say he's ready. And when the physio says he's ready, then we're going to operate. <coughs> so Ben illustrates nicely a whole bunch of multidisciplinary working in a multifactorial patient. There you go.